Hey guys, Tim Schmidt here, and I'm going to give you a quick um, curation 101 uh, type scenario here. So I've got uh, a lot of uh, interest uh, from people just saying, you know, what do you do to curate? And this is kind of following the other video that I just did about the black box platform. So uh, if you don't know about the black box platform, go in the link below, click on that link, find out more about the black box platform, my journey so far in my first year uh, with this uh, organization and this platform, uh, check that out. And then also, if you're not currently a member of black box, it's free to join. Um, all you have to do is click the referral link in there, sign up. Yes, I do get 1% uh, commissions of your sales, uh, but black box keeps 14%. If you don't use my referral link, black box keeps 15%. So it's still the same. It doesn't change anything. Uh, but since I've introduced it to you, that's what it is. But today we're going to talk curation. Um, and how to be a curator. Uh, I've got a couple of folks that have come to me and said, hey, I don't want to film stuff. I just want to put it out on the platforms and help other people out and be a collaborator within the platform. How do I do it? Um, and so I'm going to take you through my philosophy. Uh, it does. There's no right, uh, perfect way to do it, okay? Other curators do different things. This is just the way that I choose to do it, and I've had success with it. Um, I've got uh, just a little over uh, 321 clips out there um, that I've curated, and um, I've, I've got a little over uh, $522 in profit, as you've seen from the other video. So uh, clearly they're selling and uh, doing a fantastic um, job doing it, and let's get started. So what process do I take uh, to start curating uh, footage. And I think maybe we even have to get into what is curation. Um, when somebody films a video, uh, stock footage, whether it's five seconds long or 60 seconds long, uh, that footage tells a story. And it's our job as a curator uh, to number one, give it a description, a title, um, what people are searching for to find that particular footage and also to give it metadata, meaning tags and keywords. Um, so if they do, uh, if it's a dog with a cow, um, that might also, you know, someone might not search dog with cow, they might search um, heifer with puppy. Um, and so the curator has to know kind of maybe what they're gonna search for and find different ways uh, to create um, combinations, right? To unlock that code, to get that video to show up or that footage, and not just for the footage to show up, but also be appropriate for what the buyer is looking for. Because if uh, you just put a bunch of keywords that are random in there and the footage doesn't correlate with it, um, it's, it's not gonna sell, right? It's not what the buyer is looking for. So the first step to being a great curator is to be a great stock footage buyer, okay? I think that's the number one thing is, I always have a plan. What, what is the concept in mind? Why is the buyer looking for that content, that footage, right? And so I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna jump over here to, um, and we'll do some examples as well, but um, this is a little image that I put together and you're welcome to use this. Uh, just private message me or search uh, Curation 101 in the Facebook group and you'll find this image. It is in the Black Box Facebook group. Uh, but here's what I go through. I, there's, there's basically three, plat or three areas that I think about. Number one, the copy of the footage, the design of the footage, and the subject matter within the footage. Um, and I ask myself a lot of questions about this, okay? So the first part being the copy, um, I ask when I'm looking at the footage and I'm watching it, uh, I ask, you know, who's in the shot? What's in the shot? When is the shot filmed? Um, whether it be time of day or maybe um, the way that it's shot might describe like the 1920s or the, you know, third, it might be like the third, um, quarter of a football game or something like that, right? Just kind of like the, the when, uh, where is the shot filmed? Uh, what is happening in the shot? So these are the, the really obvious things, okay? And in the description, I like to really go for like the throat, right? I like to go, Pew! what what is happening in the shot and state the very obvious and make it very clear and easy to understand with nothing left to interpret about the shot, okay? And then let the combination of keywords do the rest of the work and unlock that code. Um, and the reason why I do this is because if someone's searching for it, you want them to find it. 
if it's exactly what you filmed, you want them to find it. You don't want it to be something super creative. Like I've got a whole bunch of chickens kind of moving around. I could say stampede of uh, colorful birds uh, roaming around, peering into the camera. Um, probably won't get found as well as field of chickens, um, right, which is sold. So, uh, so these are some things to think about of just what is it, state the obvious, and what is the message that you're trying to tell the viewer? So that even if they never click play to watch your film clip, they know what's gonna happen. They know what's to expect. Um, that's what I like to, to, to say about that. And then some people ask me, well, how long do you make the description? Well, there's a lot of stats that say that about 75 characters is where you want it to be. Now, there is room to play with that. You can go up to 200 characters on a description. Um, if it needs it, put it in there. I like to say, uh, you know, make sure that it's short enough to be attractive, but long enough to cover all the bits, right? Uh, kind of all that we're covering here. So copy is kind of the first thing. It's the very obvious. Um, it's gonna help you write the description uh, and, and help you uh, come up with that uh, spot. Now also part of this is the design, right? What is the style of the shot? So now we're kind of moving down into that bottom quadrant there, which is design. Um, what type of shot is it? Uh, if you search the Facebook group, you can look for um, uh, like a, it's a diagram of types of camera shots. There's names for them. You know, a close up shot is really close. It's right there. Um, you might get a panning shot. You might get certain zoom. You might get an, uh, you know, a rack focus type shot. You want to have some of those things within the description or at least within your keywords uh, and curation of that camera shot because if a buyer is looking for a puppy with a cow close up on the left in a landscape, you're gonna want that detail in there because they're gonna be searching for that. They, they have a story they are telling about something and they need this very specific shot and they're gonna to try to type as much into that box as possible to find the very shot that you've put out there. So it is important to do your homework and not just, I think a lot of uh, people, stumble into the mistake of only going into this copy space, right? And stating the obvious and curating to the obvious and forgetting about the type of shot that, that's in there, right? Um, so that's definitely gonna be something that's important uh, to note is that you want to make sure that you have um, that shot in there, that design, okay? So if it's, a, uh, if it's an establishing shot, meaning the camera is fixed, um, you're going to want to put that into your curation data. And I'll show you an example of, of like where it's more copy and how we'll get the design out of it in just a moment. And then finally, um, the subject, right? Um, you want to ask, like, are there people in the shot? What's the physical description of the landscape and the atmosphere? And it may not be so obvious, but what are some things that are happening? Maybe there's cultural things. Maybe there are um, interpretations, right? So the clip that I'm going to show you is a clip of um, a shoreline and I put pollution in there because there's a point in the shot when there's flies buzzing all around in the shot by the driftwood. Um, so it could be talking about pollution or ecology, right? And just things that are happening in the environment within. You don't know that buyer might be looking for a shot that has flies um, and pollution kind of buzzing around. So we put that in there um, as part of the subject, right? As what somebody might buy it for as an interpretation. Uh, we also talk about emotions and moods. Uh, my shot I put in there quiet. Why in the world would I put quiet? None of these things are submitted, none of these footages are submitted with audio, uh, but yet we add it because it's an emotion, right? It's, it's what the clip makes us feel. Um, so I watch a clip first for the obvious, then I watch it for the detail and the design, and then I watch a clip again to figure out the subject, how it makes me feel. What interpretations could this be used for? What applications could I use this for? And I try to really think out of the box. And then I start putting my keywords in and just brainstorming. And then I go through and I delete keywords and I add new ones. Um, and then sometimes I even change my entire description because what may have been so obvious isn't so obvious and I fill a space that needs to be filled. And also within the design, I also like to ask, how is this going to be used? If it's going to be used as a hero background image on a website, right, just that big banner at the top, I might put in there that there's room for copy or there's copy space, it's called, or maybe it's part of a series. Maybe there's multiple clips 
that are within that are part of that series. So I will talk about that as well. And then there's some no-nos in that description. Um, some things not to put in there, special characters, hyphens, right? Don't put hyphens in there. Um, money signs, pound signs. Um, also, um, a big no-no is don't put badges or IDs, meaning, um, you know, don't drop in there things that only you can search for uh, and find um, so that you can see all of your clips on all of the things. Don't do that. Um, it will get found out and it, it will create problems for you in the future. Don't, do, don't put those in there. Um, keep it relevant to the shot and keep it relevant to what the buyer's looking for. So let's go into an example here. Now that you kind of have this background, this, this idea, um, you're going to want to do some research, right? One of the first things I do if I see a, a, a clip and it's a shoreline clip, I'm going to just jump out there and I'm going to search for that. Well, let's do an example, uh, disc golfing, right? So let's, uh, let's stop the share and let's jump over to another share. Let's go to pond five, um, a footage site, and let's just do um, a disc golfer uh, scoring a shot, right? Because not always is the buyer educated on the process or that product, right? So uh, disc, um, uh, disc golf score. Um, let's do that. I can look at the footage and get a relevant idea of what they're going to find. And if I've got some footage to curate that is a disc going into a basket, um, I can make it very specific to that or I can make it different. And here's a whole bunch of clips of me, um, right? And so here's a close up of a male, frisbee golfer, making a money shot. Pow. So you saw the close up, money shot, fist pump, drag back, over celebrate. I mean, those are things that are all going to be in that clip. Also, metal, chains, wind. Um, breeze, things that are really obvious are going to be there as well. Male frisbee golfer makes a distant approach. So again, change the angle, um, put that into the curation, how it is from a different angle, uh, flags in the background, um, you know, park, all those things are in there. There might not be, you know, me even in the shot. Um, let's go, it might just be this one, right? So here's just red throwing disc tossed into a disc golf basket, right? So um, it might be in a dark setting, right? Because they might be looking for something dark. So here's a champion Frisbee golfer, celebrate after a win. There we go. So now it's out of focus. That's in focus. There's certain things happening within the shot, over celebration, fist pumps, but it's dark. It's serene. It's, diff you know, it's, it's different. Um, or it just might be the disc itself. This one I put in there uh, that it's, um, there's copy space, there's room for text. Say that Pond5 is someone's website and it's a brand. Uh, I've got an unbranded disc, I've got the sun kind of flaring through it. Um, it, it's, it. It has room and potential for somebody who's selling discs uh, to put that on their website and have copy with purchase buttons over the top. Okay, so these are things that, I, that you think about in that curation process uh, when you're going through this. Uh, let's jump on over to an actual footage that I recently um, put in here. Uh, so within the platform, um, and remember when I said that I wanted to put establishing shot here, and I also want to put in here fixed um, because I think those are important. And so uh, I can take out uh, some of these uh, other ones that I think are more interpretive. Okay, and I also want to slide these up top more. And we want to get these up higher within the queue um, because not all, uh, when you're curating, not all submission sites receive 49 keywords. Some of them are less, um, and some have a couple more, but some of them are less. And if they have less, they're going to take the first um, that you curate in there. So uh, make sure that the most important are towards the top and the least important are at the bottom. Um, so like things like light from left. So here's the shot. Um, it's just basically a, a focused driftwood. Uh, there's a lighthouse in the background. The waves are kind of rolling through. It's just a landscape. You see the flies kind of buzzing around. Um, and that's where I get my interpretation of pollution. It's during the day, the light is coming from the left. Uh, focus is in the bottom right corner. Um, so all these things kind of start dropping into my footage. So I would say, uh, the first thing's most obvious, lighthouse. Lighthouse spelled differently uh, with two, with a space in it. Uh, landscape, 
sea, lake, great, ocean. Now I could have put light and house separate, but if someone's searching for a light or a house, I don't want this clip to come up. So I'm trying to be more specific by dropping the two together if you see that. Um, background, sky, room for text, driftwood, close up, flies, cloudy, cold, morning, bug spray, blue, relaxing, calm, quiet, pier, Wisconsin, Algoma, um, marine, coast, establishing shot, structure, fixed, uh, horizon, rotten, uh, travel, melancholy, you know, more emotion, water meets shore. That's the relationship, right? The relationship um, of the water meeting the shore, the waves, uh, dream, weather, copy space, lower right, right, uh, light from left, polished, um, destination, travel. You could keep going on and on. Uh, but I, I've got that angle. Then I've got different angles down here of maybe something that I'll use more silhouette. Um, something that will be lighthouse left. Um, uh, again, still using Crescent Beach, Algoma, part of a series, copy space, room for text, background, landscape, hero, uh, you name it, it could be part of it. Leadership might even be in that uh, teamwork, bold, um, uh, light. Uh, so many things that you can start to get into uh, in this platform, but you drop them in here. And then when I do my description, driftwood on the shore, at Pier Head, Lighthouse on Crescent Beach in Algoma, Wisconsin. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty obvious. Um, doesn't get any better than that. Now I could add in here um, a comma establishing shot. Um, I, I would say that that would probably be an okay situation there because it is important that they know that this isn't going to be a camera panning or moving around. It's, it's in focus there. Okay. Um, so yeah, and when that's all done, I pick my category. In this case, I went travel. It could be landscape. Uh, it could be location and buildings. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter which one of those specifically. If someone else shot this clip, I would have to click on shares. And uh, in this case, I filmed it, I edited it, I did all of it. And you can add the people, search the people by last name. Um, it's gonna give you someone recently that you've used um, in there as well. So this is where you would add that uh, in there. And then you're just gonna click save. And then from there, uh, I can click, it looks like I've got everything and I can go ahead and submit this one. Um, and then I can say, yes, I've got everything that I need in there and it's gone. And so now I can go to the next clip. Uh, you can also batch clips together uh, by doing this and by check marking them and then create a batch name. So all these lighthouse images, um, I can create a batch name and then create similar keywords for each one of those because a lot of them may not change. There's gonna be a lighthouse and there's gonna be uh, shore and waves and water and ocean and sea and great lakes and all that stuff in there. Um, so again, you can batch those together just by creating um, a batch name and you drop your batch name in and hit create and everyone that's checked will sync together so that you can either say yes, add it to a batch or don't add it to a batch. So that is very helpful. Um, it's also very helpful that you can watch the clip separately um, and keep watching that clip over and over while working on your curation work. Um, that is important and that is fun as well. So again, kind of going back, um, going back into it, think like a buyer. Go to the stock footage site that you have, search for that, that image, and search for it from a buyer perspective, right? If you know a lot about disc golf and you search for a clanker off the top of a basket in disc golf. You may know what that is being a disc golf enthusiast, but they may not. But a missed shot in disc golf would be a clanker shot in disc golf said differently, but more obvious. So call your description, missed shot, male misses a shot in disc golf and is sad. I mean, make it obvious. Don't make them have to watch the clip to interpret it. You'll never sell, uh, maybe get lucky because it's the perfect shot. But curators state the obvious, also find unique interpretations, and they cover the design, they cover the copy, and the relationship of that clip, and find ways to put that description in there with this proper subject, so that when the buyer is looking for a shot, it's easily found, um, and it's at the top. So um, I hope this helps you uh, with your curation work. Um, it is a process. Uh, don't just jump on there and drop in the obvious and hit go. Um, take some time. 
uh, you know, it's worth it uh, because once that clip is out there, it's out there forever. You can't edit it. So make sure you do it right the first time. And if you have, uh, and if you've got a, a, someone in there with a model release or property release, make sure you put that on there. And if you don't make it editorial, editorial still sells, but, um, and also know in curation as well, that there are certain landmarks and such that you cannot, um, put out there and film. Um, they're, they're, they are copywritten landmarks, if you will. Um, they are no-nos. So uh, that's within the group. You can search that, you will find it. Um, so guys, again, if this is something that you wanna do, you wanna be a curator, or maybe you are a creator, and you're watching this just so you can do your own curation work, um, definitely um, you know, follow the, what, I, what I shared, and this is my process. Uh, there are other great processes out there and how to do curation work. Um, um, just search the group and um, there are awesome, awesome videos out there on curation. This is just one philosophy and one way about going about it. So um, check out other people's stuff, uh, find what's right for you and find your style and uh, have fun with it. But make sure if you are hiring curation work that they are taking the time to research the clip, spend the time within the emotion of the clip, the subject of the clip, the interpretations of the clip, to really get the most bang for your buck. Really make sure that curation specialist understands the buyer's perspective. Make sure that they've bought stock footage in the past. Uh, make sure that they are um, somebody that understands that industry and the industries to which you're filming clips for. Um, for myself, there are certain industries I will not do curation work for because I do not understand that particular footage and uh, it would take me way too long to research it. Um, but always look at things a certain way. If there's a breed of an animal out there, um, you know, like again, the cow and puppy, make sure you're putting the specific breed of that dog. Um, if that dog is owned by someone, uh, make sure you get a property release. It sounds crazy. Even if it's a paw coming into a shot, if you can get a property release, your footage is going to be so much more attractive to a buyer. Um, so the, the, the more of that anxiety you can take away from your buyer, the better. Um, so I hope this helped you. Again, if you aren't affiliated with Black Box yet, use the referral link below. It would be certainly appreciated. If you'd like to become a curator um, and you'd just like to participate in the platform as a curator, a trained curator, uh, go ahead and private message me. I'll show you how to do that and get signed up first and then private message me and let me know you got signed up and that you'd like to learn more about becoming a curator. You may be a stay-at-home mom with your kids and you just want to curate footage while they're napping. That's a fantastic way to create some revenue uh, in the future, again, long-term uh, over time. And, uh, and also check out my other videos as well about my journey within the black box uh, community because when I first started, I didn't know how to curate uh, back in October of last year, about a year ago. Um, I had to learn it and I had to study the guides and study the industry and how it worked and have my own success and my own failures. Some of the videos I uploaded were awesome videos and I curated them horribly in the beginning. Um, and then I also had other curators I was working with that um, they did an average job and I saw it as an opportunity that I could do my curation better. And, um, and, and I did. And, um, and I'm seeing that outcome already being very beneficial. So um, I hope this helped you. Check out the other videos, jump into the Facebook group, watch what other people are doing. Um, and just ask, you know, who's a curator, who should I follow? And I know that there's other university videos out there too that show how to do this stuff with a different style, a different twist, coming from a different background. Watch those as well. And try to just take the seasoning of mine and the seasoning of theirs and create your own style and what works for you. And um, before you start jumping into curating other people's work, and I will tell you, there will come a time when you do curate somebody else's work and it does give you a little sense of anxiety it's okay, it's normal, you should get butterflies, you're working, I mean, someone else is entrusting you with their work that you're gonna help them get it sold. Um, be open with them, let them know, you know, hey, this, you know, I'd like to get started and do some curation. Do you have some clips that you could test with me? Um, and when you uh, take on that footage, just take on five or six at a time and prove yourself, right? Tell them that, hey, I'm gonna take on five to six clips. They will get to review it and they can make some edits if they need to, but uh, just go ahead and um, ask if you can have those and start out for a 15%, right? Say, hey, I'll do it for 15% for my first handful of clips, get some clips under your belt, and then once you've got the experience, you're starting to see some sales, jump that up to the 20%. Uh, for myself, I charge 25% for my curation work because I'm seeing a lot of success with it. Um, and I also don't want a ton of the work. I just wanna be able to take on what I appreciate and what I enjoy. So 
Anyway, I hope this helped you. If you're not a member of Black Box, become one. Private message me, ask me more questions. And um, I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Adios, over now. Have a good one. Bye.